Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, when we left off, I had just made these test buttons um, and our attribute uh, was updating on the server but not on the client because I can't apply effects directly just by calling apply effects to yourself on a client. And you shouldn't be able to either. So what I'd like to do instead is we're just gonna start by making something basic. It's gonna be an effect actor. I wanna make an actor that can be in the world and um, any clients can run up to it and if they overlap with it, uh, it will apply an effect to them and then disappear. And it needs to be fully replicated so, um, uh, so everybody gets to see that the stats change and everything but at the same time it needs to be all handled on the server. So in order to do that, I'm going to come into my C++ classes, into the folders, I'm going to make a new actor, I'm going to call this an effect actor, and we can call this actors. Get rid of these comments, I don't need it to tick. not need it to tick um, but I do need this to replicate so be replicates equals true we need to leave that on there okay so now that we have this um, we're gonna want so I need an actor and I need a visual representation of it and I need some way to make sure to check for a collision so I'm gonna make a private section and I'm going to make a T object pointer, do a U static mesh component, and we'll call this uh, actor mesh. And this is a U property. Hello. That was a rider autofill accident. U property. If I can type, that's the real issue. And we're going to say visible anywhere, uh, edit. defaults only we can edit anywhere um, and we can leave it at that and then the next thing I'm going to want is a T object pointer of a U uh, box component that we'll put a forward declaration for and this will be uh, overlap box and again this is U property visible anywhere edit anywhere and from those two things, uh, the last thing we're going to need as far as like variable wise, we're going to need a T subclass of a U gameplay effect, right? We need a forward declaration on that. And then this is going to be the uh, overlap effect. U property, and this is going to be edit, I would say anywhere again. And the category is going to be custom values effects. Although, except I don't want it to be edit anywhere here in the specifiers, excuse me. I need to put visible anywhere and then meta equals allow private access to true. That These are the correct specifiers. You don't want to be able to edit these. You need to be able to access them. So allow private access equals true. Sorry. So now that I have that, I can come back into the constructor. We're replicating. That's fine. I'm going to set the, um, we're going to make the actor mesh, I'm going to set that equal to create default sub object of a use static mesh component that we'll just call actor, no spaces, actor mesh, and then actor mesh, um, oh excuse me, we'll set root component as the actor mesh, and then, um, We'll take the box, uh, the overlap box, excuse me, and set that equal to create default sub object of a U box component. And that will be the overlap box. Take the overlap box, we will call setup attachment to the um, get root component. And then we'll take the overlap box, and because it's our collision, um, these will only be these will be query only 
these aren't registered on the physics excuse me they're not registered on the physics collision by default so i don't have to worry about setting the um collision settings that way but uh we'll just strip down the channels that it's tracing against by um set collision response to all channels we'll do ecr ignore because the only overlap box the only channel that we really care about is we're going to set collision response to channel ecc pawn and we're going to ecr overlap okay so now i have an overlap box that can only overlap pawns is ignoring anything else and it's stuck to the mesh and this is replicated out there so the next thing i'm going to want to do is we're going to need to we're going to need to make sure that these overlap events only occur on the server. We're not going to let um, clients pick up items and award themselves and grant themselves things. So we're going to say if uh, has authority on begin play, we can take the overlap box and we can all components have their uh, on component begin overlap. And we're going to add a dynamic to it. And I never remember the signature, but it's a dynamic callback. So we're just going to go in the protected section and I'm going to say void uh, on box begin overlap and I need it needs to be a U function because it's dynamic callback. And then I just right click the delegate, I go to the declaration, and I go to the declaration of the delegates and it is right here. Declare dynamic multicast sparse delegate. And I need this part. Let me just copy this. Paste it there. And I get rid of the commas. Now I have a dynamic delegate callback with a matching signature. So on my dynamic, I could say this is the object and A affects actor on box begin overlap. <clears throat> so now only on the server, when a pawn overlaps the box collision, it will fire on box begin overlap. Okay, so we're just going to try to do the most basic of testing, right? I'm trying to get ahead of myself thinking of how to do this, but I'm to do the most basic form of testing. We're just going to want to sit here and we're going to want to say um, if you ability system component pointer, and this is going to be called other AFC, and we're going to set it equal to you ability system blueprint library they have a static function of get ability system component and we can pass in the other actor because theoretically it's just supposed to be players that are crossing this line and i need to we're going to do a better check in the future but i just want to test this right now so if there's an other asc then what i can do is say other we can just do this in reverse again, right? Other ASC, apply gameplay effects spec to self. And we need an F gameplay effects spec, so we need an F gameplay effects spec handle that we call spec handle, and we set that equal to the other ASC make outgoing spec. And remember, we have our gameplay effect class, that's the overlap effect. And then the level is just level one. And then we need our context handle. So F gameplay effect context handle. It's called context handle. The other ASC we call make effect context. And then I can take my context handle and put it there. And then apply the dereferenced spec handle, get the data and call get. And remember these can be const. <laughs> Let's go make these cons before he yells at me. And then what we can say is if that's the case, then we can just call destroy. So this basic setup, as far as I can tell, this should be replicated to all machines. And when a player that is a pawn overlaps it, it will apply whatever fact to the player and then destroy itself, right? So let's 
recompile, relaunch, and see what it does. Okay, now that we're back in the editor, here we go. We're, we've got a player here, but um, you know what? I want to give myself the, the buff so I can... No, let's get rid of these. Okay, so we're going to get out of the character. We're going to come back into the third person. And I've got blueprints. And then I've got um, actors. Can make a new blueprint class, all classes of the effect actor. And this is going to be BP. Um, we'll just call it what? Health down. And then duplicate it and call it BP health up. So in BP health down. I'm going to take, I'm going to get a mesh. What kind of mesh are we using? Health down is going to be a box. And the overlap box is going to have to be significantly larger. So we'll set the scale three times, four times, four times. Why not? And we'll do on health down. The only thing I should really need to do is come to the custom effects or custom values, which is the effects right here. And I need an overlap effect. So, where are we gonna put these effects? I wanna try to keep everything organized, um, but in the actors, I have that. I could say, we'll make a folder called pickup effects. And then we will put these inside pickup effects. Make a new folder and call actors. And then make a new folder called effects. And now we have this. So now I can make a blueprint that's a gameplay effect. And I can say GE pickup health up. Duplicate it and say pick up health down. Oh, um, see the pick up health up. Now we could do the same thing that we did before to try to check, right? We can make this a has duration. We can make it last. Um, oh, yeah, we can make it what last five seconds and it'll tick every point zero point seven five seconds for. Well, that's not going to do it very many times. We'll just do 0 0.5 seconds for 5 seconds. And then because this is health up, I do not want to execute it on there. I only want to give them the right amount of health. So we'll take the health and we will add, what, 5 into 5 seconds is 10 times. So we'll just do 5. So that'll heal us 50. And then GE pick up health down. We could do has duration. Oh no, we'll do instant. We'll instantly slice your health. And we're going to add health by negative 30. We'll instantly slice your health. So health down, overlap effect is pick up health down. Why did I do that? I could just use the health up and down buffs, can I? I could have done that. We could try to do that later. But now I have BP help up. We need to go do the same thing to him. This actor mesh, we can make it a cone. The overlap box, three size, four size. Three size is a little more appropriate. And this is health up. So I'm going to come into the class defaults and say custom values and the effects. And I'll say health up, pick up health up. That's fine. So now I can come into the world. I can come back into my actors and I should be able to take, this is health up is the cones. So I should be able to do this. And then I have health down is the cubes. And I'll put a couple there, right? So then I save that. 
and what do I have my settings on? I have two players. I'm a listen server. So I have server, clients, and we're going to try to shrink this a little. Try to share the screen a little. So, okay, we're all in the game. We're all here, but on the client, I can walk up to this. It disappears, and it does 30 damage to me. And then this one disappears and does 30. And then I can take the server and I can still pick that up and it's gone from the server. But what a jerk because I needed the health, right? So now we're going to pick up the health and it's going to go back up. So at the most fundamental level, we have, uh, we have everything kind of set up, ready to go on a... Uh, uh, on a replicated system so far, our, our, our ability system component is functioning. We have the ability to modify attributes and we have the way, several ways to do it. We understand that all of this is server authoritative, so we have to do things like when you want to test things on clients, you have to find workarounds to get it to do it because you have to make it work from the server. So now that we have that, um, we'll move on to the next part.